Today's class is gonna be all about the visual texture. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today, I'm going over another project with you guys. Again, we're doing some beginner ceramic projects here. I wanna get you guys stuff under the belt to make your life a lot easier as we do ceramics class. Definitely in the early phases, one of the projects I love to do is the texture tile piece. Now for the texture tile piece, you guys are gonna be rolling out, whoop, drop pieces. You're rolling out a square of clay and you're going to isolate several different squares of it and you're gonna put down a specific texture for each of those squares. For this, as you guys are looking at square in front of you, don't forget, you gotta draw some of these things out in your sketchbook. Now in the sketchbook, you're gonna throw down a nine block of squares. Now you can have more to this, you can have less of this, but do what your teacher tells you. Uh, I'm doing at least nine. Now, for each one of these blocks, I'm coming up with a different texture element to add into my spaces, and that's just gonna uh, be carried across all nine of those blocks. After I draw those pieces down, I definitely wanna get another view of them probably like a side angle so I can see how high some of these pieces are. If you're doing a bunch of spires, you wanna know if you're building these, uh, these things are coming off the board at like a foot high, that's too big, don't, don't make them that big. It won't attach right, I know that for a fact. Once you guys draw these things out, give it some detail, add your stuff into your notes because that tells us what you guys are gonna be doing progressing forward. Make sure that you're adding as much information into your sketchbook as possible because as the teacher comes around to look at how you're doing or you yourself as you're building, that is your reference point. You look back at the sketchbook to say, I need to know how to do this. This is where that idea came from because two, three days later, you forget, I forget, we all forget. Toss those notes down on the sketchbook. It comes in handy in the future. Once you've rolled out a slab of clay, divide that up in the nine blocks. Go ahead and start going to town on adding your different textures in. Now me, I like to make a bunch of pieces at once. So you can see that I'm rolling out small pill form, little pea sized pieces of clay. And I'm gonna press, cut into shapes, mess into forms. Uh, sometimes it'll be cubes or cut strips out and then slice those into cubes and manipulate them into the shape. Now for this piece, I've got a couple examples from students of mine here. Uh, we have this one here where you have coiled elements on this side, leaf elements on this side and a wavy pattern on this side. This is up to you. You guys make the patterns that you wanna make. It's not up to me. You make that decision. We have some pea pod shapes here, striped elements, an eye. I think we were doing this like as a little middle Washington DC monument. He even built a chopper on one side, which totally blew my mind when he made it. Uh, an Aztec style on this one and another pea pod shape element here. Nice crater pieces dot with elevated crystal pieces coming off of it. Lots of variety. Now you notice how all those pieces were broken up. It wasn't a nine block overall altogether because number one, Things happen in the ceramics room, pieces break, and we get the whole chunks of tiles. So as long as they had the nine pieces all built, everybody got full credit. Sometimes it happens in transfer and these things pop off. As long as they got the full nine block again, they got full credit. So if that happens to you, that can happen. Don't think it's the end of the world. Case in point, this was my example piece. It came off of a whole nine block. And uh, yeah, I've only got three left. These things happen. Now, once you have those pieces made, you're going to put a lot of slip down between the slab and the piece that you're adding to it. The slip is our glue to add it to the piece. So that's why we're doing it. I'm putting down a nice thick amount of slip that I can clean up later, but as long as I can see that texture clearly, I'm doing it fine. Putting down a lot of slip on this project is kind of an essential thing. You wanna make sure that everything balances out and, and adds together so that when you go to fire it, you don't have pieces flying off, that's not good. Add a lot of slip, add the pieces together, let it sit for one to two days to fully dry out before you fire it to make sure that everything dries out evenly. Most uh, teachers know that I, I myself, I do a candling phase during my kiln firing, which means when the pieces go in, I don't start the fire right away. I usually set the kiln and then I let the candling mode go for between eight and 12 hours, depending on how the kids were making their pieces in class. Uh, I wanna make sure that everything is fully dried out so everything survives the fire properly. Lastly here, we're putting in our glaze. Now for the glaze, I'm caking the glaze on. I want a nice thick amount of glaze. I'm gonna clean up the outside of the, pro the piece around it. So if a glaze gets on the bottom of it, as always, if the glaze is on the bottom of the piece, clean it off completely. Reason being is because most of the glaze that we use, so this is the opalescent glaze. It's got a nice shiny gloss exterior here. That gloss tells me there's frit in the glaze and the frit is gonna turn into glass. And that glass is then gonna fuse to my shelf. And then I gotta take a hammer to the piece that's stuck to my shelf. 
So make sure that all that glaze is probably cleaned up because if it's fused to the shelf and we gotta break it off, that's a problem for uh, who's ever piece we had to smash. I always tell my students, make sure that everything is clean properly. I double check as well. So make sure that there is absolutely clean pieces. If it's whatever touches the shelf, that has to be clean, no glaze. Always the rule in my classroom. I should probably make a little poster for that. Fire those bad boys up. Once they come out of the kiln, nice shiny pieces. I love I love this like Subway-esque green here. This, it's like something out of Harry Potter. This is the, the Ministry of Magic. That's the wall. Oh, that's cool. One looks like little sea pellets. Looks like the bottom of the sea. Good stuff, came out really well. Hope you guys got something wonderful out of today's class as we always, uh, as I'm always trying to achieve with you guys. Don't forget if uh, to take care of the homework, which is a like, subscribe, share it on all the various platforms. Get the message out there. Just meet teachers, friends, and students as we, as we possibly can. Uh, get the message out there. We'll spread the word to all of our friends. Also, don't forget if you guys had a question, comment, concern, raise the hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. Other than that, I will see you guys next class. So until then, Later, guys.